Welcome to part two of this video in which we are using static analysis of particles to determine the tension in cables and ultimately our goal is to determine the uh, force that uh, this support must apply in order to keep the whole thing from falling down. So in part one we did a free body diagram of the ring that holds the weight and then did an analysis on that free body diagram and discovered that the tension in the two cables is given by these numbers that I've drawn on the on the diagram. Now we will uh, take these uh, or take the value of the tension on the left cable and use it to find the tension in the support cable as well as the force that our support has to um, has to supply to keep the whole thing up. And we'll do that again by creating a free body diagram of the top of the pole. So let's do that. Okay, so we'll let this particle represent the top of the pole. And we have the force applied by cable 1, which looks something like this, it has a magnitude of T1, which we now know. We computed this to be 5,769 pounds. We also will have the tension supplied by the cable connected to the support. I'll call this T3. And we'll have the force supplied by the pole, which I'll call N. And our goal then is to compute the uh, value of n. Uh, we'll also end up computing T3 in the process based on the fact that we don't want this particle to move. Uh, we want it to be static. Okay, so in order to do this, uh, we will find angles and x and y components of the forces using trigonometry. So if I look at T1, uh, it's a force that is applied by a cable that goes for 30 feet to the right and 20 feet down. And this is similar to the triangle we had last time for T1. Uh, that's not a coincidence. It turns out that this angle is 33.7 degrees. Okay, if we look at the triangle for T3, I go down 100 feet and over 50 feet. So this is 100 and 50. And this angle here then will be the arc tangent of 50 feet over 100 feet. And if I compute that, I get that this angle will be 26.6 degrees. So basically, this angle here is 26.6. Uh, this angle with respect to the horizontal is 33.7. Okay, so there I have uh, the angles that I'll need. The next thing to do, uh, again, our ultimate goal here is to sum the forces in the x direction and set that equal to zero, sum the forces in the y direction and set that equal to zero. So we need to find the components of the forces in the x and y direction. So let's do that next. Uh, for T1, we have the X component going this direction and the Y component going this direction. The X component is going to be T1 cosine 33.7 degrees. That's what this guy's going to be. The Y component is going to be T1 sine 33.7 degrees. That's this guy here. Now we actually know what T1 is. T1 is 5,769 pounds. 
So when it com comes time to do the actual computations, we know what that is. Uh, similarly, we'll find the y and the x components of T3. And based on the fact that the x component is opposite of the angle here, we have that the x component is T3. Oops, I'm starting to get into my workspace that I'll need in just a minute. T3 uh, sine 26.6 degrees. That's this guy here. And uh, the y component is T3 cosine 26.6 degrees. That's the leg that's adjacent to the angle. So that's over here. Okay, so I now have the x and y components. I also have uh, this normal force, the force exerted by the pole, which only has a y component uh, because we're assuming that the pole is not uh, exerting horizontal forces to keep itself upright. Okay, so if I sum the forces in the x direction then, I will have uh, this guy, and since it's going to the left, it will be negative T3 sine 26.6 degrees. And then I'll have this guy, which is T1 cosine 33.7 degrees, and this is equal to zero. In the y direction, I'll have um, this guy here, which is negative T3 cosine uh, 26.6 degrees minus this guy here, T1 sine 33.7 degrees plus N, and again that's equal to zero. Okay, so I have two equations and two unknowns. Again, remember I know T1. And the top equation I can actually solve directly for T3, and then I could plug that value into the bottom equation and solve for N. But instead, I'm going to be as lazy as possible and just plug it all into uh, math, uh, Wolfram Alpha and let Wolfram Alpha figure it all out for me. So I have minus T3, I'll call that C, Oops. times cosine 26.6 plus T1, which is 5769 cosine 33.7 is equal to 0. And then we have minus C sine 26.6 minus um, T1, which is 5, 7, 6, 9. Oh, something's wrong here. I'm typing this in incorrectly. Okay, let's try this one more time. This should be a sine, and this should be a cosine. Okay, then we had sine 33.7, and then we had plus n, and that's equal to zero. Okay, if I've got this right, which right now seems like sort of a big if, let's see what happens. Okay, so it gives me the solution set, and it says that uh, T3 is 10,719 pounds, and N is 12,785 pounds. Okay, so I go back to my, whoops, we go back to our drawing here, and we have now that T3 this is equal to, the, this tension is 10,719 pounds, and N, the normal force uh, exerted upward by our pole, is 
12,785 pounds. So there we have it. We've actually computed now this force that we were interested in. It turns out, if we go back to our original picture, in order to support a four ton weight in the way we have it set up here, where the pole is uh, stayed by a cable, the pole actually has to be able to support um, almost 13,000 pounds. So to support an 8,000 pound weight, we have to have a pole capable of supporting 13,000 pounds. Uh, this seems kind of interesting or strange at first glance, uh, but basically um, this pole is supporting a little less than half of the 8 ton weight, and it's also taking into account uh, the tension in this cable which is used to keep the pole upright. So that concludes part two of this video. In part three, we'll redo all of these computations using vectors rather than trigonometry and drawing triangles. Uh, the vector approach has the advantage of um, being less messy, less computation, the disadvantage of potentially being less intuitive. So stay tuned for part three.